So welcome again to the every year multilingual talk. <laughs> I just changed two or three slides. <laughs> no, no, sorry. The, the approach of this year is really different. Instead of talking about Plone PP multilingual, we are going to talk about multilingual sites in Plone. That's really different. So we are going to talk about Plone PP multilingual. That's the question. So first, who we are? I'm Ramon Navarro. Plone developer since 2004. I'm a member of the FEMO team. I, I work as Plone developer at iscro.cat, and she's uh, Laura Perez Mayos, also Plone developer since 2007, and Plone developer also at the same company as me. And I've been responsible of the multilingual solution on, on Plone since, I don't know, maybe six or seven years ago. So we are going to talk about the multilingual problem, or why doesn't not everybody speak Catalan? That will be much easier and less problems. So how many people has multilingual sites here? Okay, and how many of you are uh, from USA or U UK? Oh, congrats! <laughs> really great. <laughs> so um, there are a lot of languages. And we can see on the laptop of Miko that we have, I speak a lot of languages. And we have a lot of communication problems, you can see in, <laughs> on during the lunch. <laughs> so um, what's happening is that we need some kind of solution on, on the CMSs. Sorry, this is not moving. Yeah. So um, we need to solve the problem on CMSs. So we, what we need to do is to translate the page uh, on, the, on your site so it's available in different languages. But this simple problem um, brings with you a lot of other consequences and that needs to be solved. For example, language independent fields on image fields, we need to copy the field, the image to all the different translations. We need to have shared content. Shared content means that maybe you have some kind of manual that's in English and in Spanish and you want to share on, the, on your web page. And besides that, we have a small companies, small sites, that they don't want to translate all the pages, they only want to translate some pages. So they want to share the content between all the different languages. And more problems are language fallbacks. Okay, what happens when we try to access some kind of content that's not being translated to the language we want? And, okay, keeping translation up to date, that means that if anybody modifies some kind of uh, object, they need to be notified that the translations need to be updated also. So. Um, multilingual is one of the hardest problems, I think, <laughs> it's on the web pages, and nobody wants to talk about that, nobody wants to take care about that, everybody wants to avoid working on that, so uh, I also want to avoid, if anybody wants to take <laughs> the, leader, <laughs> the, the responsibility of that, I'm really welcome to that. But uh, we try to find our best solution, uh, so what we did is just try to check what our competitions, competitors does and try to get all that's great from them and just try to get on Plown. So what this talk is about that. So let's we are going to see what our competitors do and we are going to see how Plown does the same. Okay, so now it's th your time. Hello? So when we have to face the multilingual problem, we have two different problems, how to translate the interface and how to translate, how to translate the content. Uh, for translating the interface, it's pretty easy. You just have to use uh, language files like PO files or property files, and you have it. But then for the content, uh, you have to think if you want to translate just fields or the content. And it depends on what kind of uh, project you are going to use. So let's take a look at what are our competitors doing. Uh, the Drupal guys, uh, had, they have really good solution, I think. It's, uh, they allow to, content, uh, to, translation, to translate content and also translate entities that it's our objects and fields in Plone. And you can actually configure each uh, method for every kind of content type, so it's pretty useful. Uh, 
they also have really two nice features. It's uh, to track your translations. You know, a common problem is that when you create a content, you have to translate, but usually you are not the guy who is going to translate it. Uh, so you need to flag it as, okay, somebody has to translate this content. Also, you have another kind of problem that you change something and you need the other translations to be marked as outdated. So they have two nice checkboxes to do that. They also allow side-by-side -side translation, and you have to uh, you can use uh, some kind of Google translation plugin in case you want to base uh, to have basic translation. Uh, on the other hand, they don't allow language fallback. You just uh, fallback to it's just available for, for the interface, not for the content. And they don't allow language independent fields, so if you wanna use some pictures on everything, you have to put it on every translation you do, so it's not pretty useful. Uh, then we take a look at WordPress. Uh, they also allow to translate uh, content type taxonomies, that it's a kind of uh, categories in Plum, and also custom fields. They have uh, some mechanism to track translations, just kind of workflow. Uh, so you can mark the, the objects as waiting for a translator, uh, being translating, or complete. And they also have a really nice feature. It's uh, professional translation services. They have a kind of connector with uh, I can localize services. It's professional translation services, so you can actually uh, hire a, transla a translator for translate your content, and you manage to pay through the web and everything, so it's pretty nice. Uh, but it's uh, pretty strange, they don't allow side-by-side -side translation, so when you are translating some content, you don't have the original, maybe you can start by copying it, but it's not the same as seeing it. And then they don't allow language fallback, so if it's not there, it's not there. Uh, we also took a look at library. It's not pretty good. They just allow field translation. They don't talk about objects or nodes or anything. Uh, they have some kind of automatic translation. I couldn't manage to know if it's with Google Translate or I don't know what kind of plugin they are using. So you have no content translation. You have no way to track your translation uh, workflow. Uh, you have no side-by-side -side translation, so it's pretty basic, and it's not really useful. So we put all this data in a kind of table, so you can see that uh, maybe Drupal and WordPress have kind of nice solutions. Library in, is not so good for multilingual sites. Uh, but then we try to, to use them, and they are not really usable. They have not good interfaces. It's all hard to find and hard to use. So uh, let's see how Plone uh, is doing this. So please. Okay, so all of them sucks, and Plone really rocks. So <laughs> that's the conclusion. So we are going to talk about now a bit about Plone. That's that's why we are here. So uh, the multilingual story in Blown started in 2004 when Geir uh, just uh, pushed uh, Lingua Blown. I know that everybody hates Lingua Blown, but has been there. It's been a really great, great software. Does a lot of magic. It's it's been there since 2004, so it's it's really great, and everybody uses that. Has been using that. The only problem is that only supports our types. And some of the magic and some of the decisions on the design has uh, bring us, us a lot of problems. If you use Lingua Plown, it's easy that you f finish having a site with different languages, content languages on the same folder. It's really a mess. You get a mess. The editors hate you, and it's really bad. We, in 2009, we had Raptors multilingual multilanguage feel. The, their approach is really different. Instead of translating cotton, what they want to translate is fields. So, okay, you have uh, your, field, your content type and you only want to translate this field. 
it's really a different approach. It's easy to have a canonical object because it's the one object and then you only translate the fields. has a lot of problems. You, ha you have no REST URLs, so it's, uh, you cannot give a URL that's going to give you that language. So it's really with some attributes on the URL, yes, but without no. Um, and it's also for our types right now. And it's a bit, uh, the implementation is a bit hard to understand. Uh, we had, uh, we have collective multilingual that Malta did uh, one year and a half. There is no release still, uh, so I don't know if it's going to release someday. It's a really simple way to deal with um, multilingual problem in the same way as uh, Lingoplum was doing, uh, but with only dexterity, no support for types, no uh, UI, no usability, but it's really thin. And there has been no release and no commits, I think, since one year or something like that. And finally, uh, Plon APP Multilingual that we released on 2011, and now we are in version 1.2, stable, really in a lot of sites in production. And we are going to talk a bit about what it offers to, to you. In order to talk about that, we first we need to, um, to think about what Plone is, which is the relation with Plone and Multilingual. So if you install Plone out of the box, you have the option to have one language. You can define the default language, and you can define the multiple language only for the UI translation. So you have the, the language selector. You can switch between the languages. And what's changing you is the UI, the profiles, the, the things that are translated, translated on the code. But you cannot translate code uh, content. Sorry. Then we have multiple languages. and. In order to explain how multilingual uh, solve this problem, we need to um, have in our head two different kinds of content. One kind of content is the one that's sh shared documents. These shared documents are documents that there is only one on all the Plone site, and you see that object on all the languages. You may be able to translate some fields for the different languages. And you have fallback included because it's one object, so you always get the object in, in, the, in, the, in the language that you want, or at least the, if it's translated, it's field. And the document in a language, that's the document that has been translated to the language that you really want to, to see. In this case, we have language independence fields, and we can translate this object to another object. In order to explain this, this really nice graphic, so we have shared content, in this case, these doc two documents, and we have uh, document two that's being translated to the other language. So what we see in language one is the two, the two objects that are, are on our language and the shared content also there. And on language two, we have the two uh, objects we have here and the two objects over there. So having in mind these two kinds of uh, documents that we normally have in um, multilingual solutions we saw in the other in our competitors they some of them solve only one of these documents the others both of them plone app multilingual 1.x for plone 4.x uh, implements language independent fields that means that you in, with R types or dexterity you can define which fields are independent and when you create the translation uh, the fields are copied there. We have shared content. In this case, in, Plon, in Multilingual 1, it's fake shared content. It's really implemented in a really um, fast way, and it's not completely working at, for uh, all the use cases, but it at least does the, does the feature. We have a translation map that's really useful for editors, who they can see which Content is not has not been translated to some languages, and you can see the map of all the languages. Side by side translation, Google translation integration, so you can say, okay, I want that Google translates this field, and it's translating you to the other side of the the side by side translation. We have um, translation of content types of R types on dexterity. You can uh, translate that on the fly or just by code, or not on the fly, whatever you want. On the fly means that it's not creating the object until the translation is finished, so it's not there if, it's, if you don't save the, the translation. 
we have lingo plum migration that has been the worst <laughs> part of all the all the code uh, you can have a site with multi lingua plum I can assure that it's working I cannot assure that's working because there are a lot of use cases that's impossible to maintain and it's possible to have the solution for everybody but at least that's the deal with an, a standard plum with lingua plum so if you want to migrate to Plone PP multilingual it's possible and we have fallbacks, so you can, in case that the, the object is not translated, you go to the closest one, that means the, the object from, if the, your parent is being, has been translated, so the parent or the closest one we found on our tree, or a list of possible translations that are there for that object. Okay, that's Plone Note 1, it's been there since one year and a half, it works, it's really production. But uh, Plone, Plone PP Multilingual 2, uh, it's going to be for Plone 5. Right now it's possible to use that on Plone 4. Um, and we just changed some of the decisions we made on our first version. We have language independent fields on our types and dexterity. We have real shared content, that's really uh, the, the, main, the main feature. So you can have objects that are only once on the database, on the ZODB and you can see them on all the different languages, and you can just move, order, or whatever you want. Side-by-side -side translation, Google translation, translation of IT content types, or index data content types, and also fields, fields for the shared content. And language fallback, because we have translation of fields, translation map, and translation workflow. Some of these features are still in being developed, so what we really have now is the real shared content, and initial implementation of the fields translation for shared content. And as um, talking all about the, all these features is really great, we will try to do some real demo about uh, all this kind of stuff. So every, everybody sees how, how we should do a multilingual site on Plone. So uh, we have a plone site. This is a 4.3 with PAM 2.0 that's being in development. Um, we are going to create a plone site. We need to check that uh, to install dexterity because we uh, we just uh, um, prepared for Plum 5 and Plum 3. We don't have dexterity installed by default. Demo. <laughs> Sure, we tried five times yesterday, and it was working. <laughs> so, Timo, did you make some comment to co co to content types? Maybe that's a problem, no?
somebody made a commit that removed my my commits. So we will try again. If there is any question, while well, we try to to make that work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have a blown site that just installed. We are going to in to to migrate to from R types to dexterity. We just migrate it from to dexterity content times. We are going to add some kind of dexterity type on the on the blown side. So we are going to create some kind of page. Okay. Okay. And uh, now we are going to install Plone App Multilingual. You can see here that there is also our types multilingual if you want to still support our types. Okay, so now uh, we we need to uh, set the behaviors on content types because we uh, right now content types doesn't have a translatable by default configured. So we are going to configure the behavior on the Plone app content types. That all of this is going to be soft on Plone five by default, but for doing the demo, we needed to. Yes, that. No. So now, we just defined the behaviors on the dexterity. We are going to go to the Plon, uh, multilingual control panel to define our um, our languages. So we are going to add English to this. Okay. Okay. So now when we set the the different languages on the control panel, it just they just created the different language root folders, the CA and the N. So if we go to the to the root, we are going to go to the default to the one that we have on the cookie that's English. So and you can see here that there are all the content that was on the root of the system. So we have the welcome page, the news, the events, the users and the page that we just created using dexterity. If we switch to another language, we switch to Catalan, for example. We'll see the same content that's 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 there, um, and we're going to go to English, and we're going to create some English page. Now this page is going to be really in English because we are in the English folder, so it's going to be English page. Okay, now if you go to the to the root of English, okay, and we see the contents. Yeah. What wasn't possible on multilingual one was to um, uh, reorder the shared content because it was fake. In this case, it's real. So we are going to really re reorganize this. So we are going to be able to see that end page has been reordered. And... Um, we are going to go to, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, we are going to go to this page we just created, end page. And uh, the fallback in this case, it's uh, decided to be the closest one. So if you go to Catalan, we are going to go to the CA folder. That's the closest one we have in Catalan. That's the language root folder in Catalan. So we are going to switch again to English. 
and we are going to translate this end page to Catalan. So we have this side-by-side -side, um, form. You can ch choose which language do you want to see on the left. So you see the information on the left. If you go up, one moment, yeah. This warning here, it just says that this is object is going to be a translation of another object. In case that you don't want to make that a translation of another object, you should press here because it's using the, the, uh, an adapter, a uh, traversal adapter that's called a translation. If you go down and we save, Okay, we are now in the Catalan, we switch to English, they are linked, so we see each other one. So now we are going to see, these are the documents that are in different languages, so we can just have different content for each, each document. If you go to, to the shared folder now, we see the, all the content that's being shared to all the other languages, that's the root of the, of the plone file, on the plone site, and we are going to create a, yeah, we create a page here. So we just created this page in the shared folder. If we go to the root of the CA, we see that the page is already there. And if we, we switch to another language, the page is also, also there. Um, and now what happens if we have a shared uh, page and we want to uh, make them from one language? So in this case, for example, page two is something that is being shared, doesn't have language because it's on all the content. And we want to set for this page that, okay, it's not going to be more uh, shared, it's going to be English. We can set that. So it's going to be English, for example. And now this page is uh, on English, so if we switch to Catalan, we are not seeing the page because it's only a uh, real content on the different languages. And okay, and we are going to try something uh, really hard. That's we are going to create an image. In this case, we just hook uh, hook at the content types to make the image feel from the image a language independent. So we are going to just add a photograph here. We save, we see the, the photograph. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and uh, we can translate that to English. OK. Go down, just save it. So we see that in English we have the same image. And we can edit now the image, the English version or the Catalan version, doesn't matter. Every, every version that we just change the image here in the other version is going to be applied. OK, so now we have the different image. And we can switch the, the language. And we see that in Catalan is the same. OK, so I think that was nearly. Yeah, we can switch again to the. So this was the demo. Already worked it. <laughs> Uh, and my idea was just to have uh, more questions. Uh, I really want to thank, do we have 31 uh, contributors to Plone PP Multilingual? There are a lot of people that it's being involved in the development. We have more than Plone PP widgets coverage. We have 72%. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, it's a really stable product. We are viewing, we are using the on a lot of sites, because in, at least in my country, we, all the sites need to be in two languages. So it's, we have no plone sites with uh, only one language. So. <laughs> and if there is questions, yeah. Uh, the PLIP is, uh, has been there for a long time. Um, we are just been talking during the plone conference to accept the PLIP. It's going to be in the core, but it's not going to be installed by default. So it's going to be an add-on that's being bundled with the rest of Plone 5, just because um, it's something that is really being used in a lot of places. And it would be really great to uh, adapt some kind of Plone APP 18N uh, to be more compatible with that uh, Plone APP multilingual. 
be just because the control panel on and the selector and some other small things on Plony pp 18n are really all and should be adapted to to you to uh, be more powerful with this solution there is a small javascript of maybe 50 lines or 70 lines for the side by side translation that will need to be integrated with Plony pp widgets uh, I, th I think that there is no test. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that th that would be really great. Yeah. Well, the problem is that it's really linked to the language, to the language codes right now, uh, but all the code that we do for doing the shared content, it uh, was based to the collective dot alias that Martin wrote some long time ago, so we removed all the hacky things that he did there, and we just uh, talking with him about which is the best solution, we just copied what's on the root of the system to the, um, to the language root folder. The, the idea, you, you can copy them. The problem is that it's really linked to languages. It will be really easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It will be really easy. Just I'm linked to the languages that we have there, just to create to to check that it's a language root folder and all this kind of stuff. But adapting that will be really easy. More questions? Well. <laughs> Just we try to make something usable. <laughs> that's, that's really hard to multilingual. <laughs> We tried to just uh, Lingoplon could not uh, go on with, with uh, on dexterity, so we needed another solution. And the usability point of from the usability point of view, our competitors are really bad. Our, we we tried all all the possible, so and we tried to just find a solution that's really easy for the editor, and you don't need to break your mind about oh where is this content or. Uh, Sure. Yeah. Translation map, uh, I cannot show you because I break on this uh, 2.0 version. Um, but it's, uh, it has two, two views. One is a tree using some kind of uh, JavaScript framework that just shows you uh, a tree of the, all, the all the root and different translations. And you, you just can pick to the content and see which translations you have, which are missing. You can create them through the through the through the, through a link, and you have the other view that's all the content that you have in case that you need mirror sites. So on all the languages you have all the content translated. It says, okay, this trans this content is not translated to that language. This content is not so you can have a review of all the this. Translating text. Okay. Yeah, the the on dexterity, uh, it works really great because if or at least if you have a tag as a vocabulary that you have translate translation for the for the tag, we're using the message uh, the the message tool. Or, then, if you have that on your uh, on your vocabulary in order to make the tags, uh, the relation field automatically gets the translation. So, in case that you have uh, language independent field on dexterity and you translate the content, 
and the related object has a translation to that same content, it's taking care that the related object is the, the translation of the top chain. Yeah, we we are we are working on that. It's uh, on this list the translation workflow that's uh, on the bottom of it. We we really think that's something that we really need on on Plone for translations. But we are still working. If if anybody wants to work on any of these features, just uh, we are going to to sprint on it. <laughs> With XLIF or something like that, or uh, oh, you mean the 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 po files and all the translation files? No, there was a project Malte we just started that I think five or six years ago to make that, but we couldn't find uh, an easy solution, a fast solution to to maintain that. But uh, I think that with uh, at least with Plum Five, if we remove some of the the stack that we have for uh, um, A18N folders and language, because we have two methods to maintain Plum files right now, if we reduce this amount of uh, possibilities to locales, and it will be easier because we had a really big problem with Plum A18N folders to get the Plum files from there. Oh, as we are using placeless translation services uh, on some cases, uh, we still can try to do that uh, if if we want. Besides the the changes of Kano, uh, there there is there is an option to make that, but we will need to wait until Palm Five is out there to re to reduce the amount of dependencies that we have now for that features. Any other questions? So thank you really much.